This is a video about cobweb diagrams and sums of infinite series. It's motivated by the question asking how we visualize something finite which is made up of an infinite series of things. This is part one, cobwebs on the outside. So what is a cobweb diagram and how do we draw one? Let's start with a unit length one. We want to start with a triangle, so let's draw a side of length x, where x is less than one, at a 90 degree angle to the unit length. So let's label some points, O, B, and P. We're going to draw a line from O to B, and we're going to extend it out to P. And how far is P? P is as far as it takes until we can drop a line PN so that we can get this isosceles right triangle PNA with 45, 45, and 90 degrees in the corners. So we can call the length ON on the bottom S, and the remaining length AN is S minus 1 because OA is 1 and because A and P is a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, the other side, and P is also S minus one. Okay, so before we draw the actual cobweb diagram, uh, I wanna point out this ratio. Uh, the ratio is from the side OA to AB and the side ON to NP. So one is to X as S is to S minus one, and I'll show why that is. So the reason that the ratio is true is that the two triangles, BOA and PON, uh, are similar triangles. Um, they're both right triangles and they share the common angle BOA, the blue one. So that means that the green ones have to be the same because the sum of the interior angles has to be 180. So if one is 90, they both share the blue one, that green one has to be the same for both of them. So just to be explicit about that, we can see that OA over AB circled in green, is going to be the same as ON over NP, which is circled in magenta. Okay, now that you've committed that ratio to memory, um, we can draw the cobweb diagram, and here it is. Basically, we just staircase these uh, 90 degree angles all the way up, and it's supposed to go all the way up to infinity, but I stopped at the letter I, so it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Um, and what can we do with cobweb diagrams? Well, uh, first we're going to need to know the lengths of each of those interior sides. We know, for example, that these red angles are actually 45 degrees. So we know immediately that uh, those are going to go all the way up and that AB is the same length as BC. So we'll just label side BC with X. So what is length CD? Let's use similar triangles to figure it out. We can use the fact that OA is to AB as BC is to CD to find the length of CD. We know that this ratio is true because the triangles are similar. Uh, if we look at the blue angles, we see that those are corresponding angles for the parallel lines BC and ON, and therefore the green angles must also be the same. So the two triangles are similar, and the side ratios must hold. The ratio tells us that to go from the long side on the bottom, OA, to the short side on the right, AB, we multiply by x. So the same thing again, when we go from the long side of the bottom, BC, to the short side on the right, CD, we multiply by x. So x times x is x squared. So here we label CD with the length x squared. So we can also find the length DE because CDE is a 45, 45, 90 triangle and those two sides have to be the same. Using the reasoning about similar triangles, we can show that FG is also a factor of X smaller than DE. So each time we go up the cobweb, each of those horizontal segments is X times the last one. Where X is less than one, so they're getting smaller. Although the cobweb diagram supposedly goes on to infinity towards the point P, we'll just label up to segment HI, which is X to the fourth power. So now we can see the first part of this really cool result, which shows us that if we take the sum of those horizontal segments, we actually can show that s is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth, and on and on and on. And of course you all memorize that ratio I told you to remember, which is 1 to the x is the same as s to the s minus 1, because we can do something pretty cool with that now. So if we solve for x from this ratio, which we do by cross multiplying, so we get s minus one on the left, we multiply by x on both sides, so we have xs on the right, we will add one to both sides and subtract xs, 
then we will factor out the s and we'll divide by 1 minus x. Now of course we have to be sure that we're not dividing by 0, so make sure that x is never 1, which we know because x is strictly less than 1, and s is never 1. Um, and I'll leave you to think about why that is. If you shrink s down to 1, the diagram disappears. And it can't quite get there because x can't be equal to 1, so s can't actually shrink down that far. So we've shown that s is equal to both of these things. s is equal to this uh, infinite series of 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and on and on and on, and it's also equal to 1 over 1 minus x. So those two things must be the same. So we've visually shown how this finite thing of length s can actually be made up of this infinite series of smaller horizontal pieces, 1 through x to the n. Uh, let's try plugging in a value for x. So x is less than 1, let's try x equals 1 half. So the sum of all these horizontal pieces would be 1 plus 1 half plus 1 half squared plus 1 half cubed, which is 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth, and on and on and on. But we can just write the whole thing as 1 over 1 minus x, which is 1 over 1 minus 1 half, which is 1 over 1 half, so it's just the reciprocal, which is 2. And we'll just finish by showing a couple more examples. So if we take x to be one-third, we get one plus one-third plus one-third squared plus one-third cubed, which is one plus a third plus a ninth plus a twenty-seventh, and on and on and on. But we know that that's just equal to one over one minus x. The whole sum is equal to one over two-thirds, which is a reciprocal, which is three-halves, which is one and a half. And lastly, just to show that it doesn't have to be 1 over something, x can be 2 over 3, for example, uh, just as long as x is less than 1. So that's 1 plus 2 thirds plus 2 thirds squared plus 2 thirds cubed. So you get 1 plus 2 thirds plus 4 ninths plus 8 twenty sevenths plus on and on and on and on, which is 1 over 1 minus 2 thirds, which is 1 over 1 third, which would be 3. So if in the triangle you made that side 2 thirds, then the side s would be equal to 3.